Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. Uh, sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff from Hooniverse. <laughs> that was the weakest ass burp ever. I was I was expecting a little more like resonance, and we didn't get it. It was very. That was like my second sip of seltzer, so I, I had nothing in the tank. Can it be tenery? Can that? Is that? <sighs> I, I don't know. <laughs> We're making up words tonight, so yeah. Um, the show's gonna be a little different tonight. Ross is not here yet so they are still adjusting um they had a baby uh, in june and and then we took off the month of july just kind of ourselves and we just never got but it's august 30th we're gonna record shows again now we're coming yes. back yes but yeah so still doing it distance uh i'm in the midwest i'm in kansas city jeff's still in california in his garage the off the road again podcast is on the road again even though it's still off the road again can we be on the rails again? There you go. There we go. <laughs> oh, I don't get paid to write words anymore, so I don't. <laughs> now it's for fun. <laughs> um, so my only update is I just I live in adventure van land now. So uh, all I do is talk. And my if you go by my office at work, it looks like I'm completely unproductive because I'm on my phone all day. I'm either texting someone about an adventure van or emailing someone about an adventure van or actually on the phone with them. So. And are you guys strictly transit or you'll, you'll work with anything? No, only transit. Okay. And only, uh, we prefer that you don't bring the van to us. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, we can, I, I feel like now I'm doing the sales plug, but like, because for, we work with Ford Direct, like there's no dealer okay. involved. And so like, they're coming off the line in Clay Como, Missouri. That's awesome. 25 minutes down the road and coming straight into the facility. Oh, that's so, huge. Yeah. So we're, we're still getting chassis. We're. Uh, I think we get like 30 or 40 that we order a month. Um, yeah. It's wild. I mean, yeah, yeah if you order volume like that, uh, Ford's probably like, yeah, we're happy to just send them right to you. Well, there's there's things in the work that I think like we've actually been able to provide feedback to corporate on things that we want to say. And they're like, oh, well, you're buying a bunch. So let's talk about it. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What could we, what could we make easier for the people buying these? Yeah, right. sure. Awesome. So yeah, I uh, I just got back from Overland Expo mountain west i have to think about it all the time because like you got west and flagstaff which was great in may and this was in loveland colorado which the last time i was in loveland it was like turning west to head up to estes kind of thing yeah in like the early 2000s yeah and i had not realized that like all of denver and all of fort collins have now grown together like there there's no longer empty field uh around it basically so yeah, I, I feel like I've driven through Loveland on press trips at some point, but uh, I can't really picture it in my head. Yeah, it, I would say that it looks like every other suburb between Denver and Fort Collins. So yeah, okay. other than it has this great like event space um, where basically the entire show is set up. It, it takes something away from it because Expo West is in the trees there in Flagstaff. So it's all those okay. massive pines everywhere. And East is kind of in those hills of Virginia. Mm. And this is a field in Colorado. Like, are there are there a north and a south? Not that I'm aware of. I got to go to one one of these days. I want to I want to do the Flagstaff one. So I can tell you the Flagstaff one seven hours because I have a coworker who's based out of L.A. and so he drove oh. over to us. So that's not terrible. <laughs> no, I, well, and like at that point, like I'm 16 hours away from Kansas City. Like I'm closer to L.A. than I am here, which is not normal for me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I, I saw cool stuff. I walked around. I had a good time. I took pictures of stuff. I actually was sending pictures to you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything that before the, besides the other thing we're about to talk about, was there anything that like really jumped out at you? It was like, whoa, that's cool. Um, I actually stepped foot inside of an earth roamer for the first time. And I was like, okay, well, this is just, I, I already had the assumption that I've always like joked. It looks like a New York studio apartment that they just slapped on the back of a truck. None of that was dissuaded for me. <laughs> like it was the, the, uh, it seems too nice on the inside. Was it Matt's from Max tracks? I don't think so. I think it was earth realm or corporate who was oh, okay. were in the booth behind us. So, um, I, yeah, it definitely wasn't Matt's, um, uh, cause his is like silver and this one was like, green rhino line oh my goodness they're right. insane so was it like it was probably their ltv or whatever it is yeah it's the lti so i think lti it's carbon bodied oh my god this isn't that one worth more i think this one's worth more right yeah it's like six to eight hundred thousand <sighs> that's 
That's so wild. <laughs> so every literally, so I was surrounded by F550 chassis. Yeah. So like you can see the hood of my my van and the Illuminus Deluxe box in the bottom of the picture here. Like that's just okay. in between our stuff. And this was just sitting behind us. I never took the time to ask what these black things are on the doors. Oh yeah. It, it looks like you should be able to like slot something in there and lock it. Right. But, it, but it's on the outside. So like I mean, they could be lights. It could yeah, I some kind of camp lights just in a, in a kind of an awkward placement. Yeah, it but it's Maybe like seen on the door. So that's yeah. why I was like, yeah, anyway, I wasn't quite sure what it was. Hmm. But uh, I mean, they had people talking to them. There was a couple of times I like stepped back here out of our booth to like make a phone call or something. And there'd be like a toddler hanging out that window being like, hi, how are you? What's going on? Right. Like, Good Lord, you're so tall. Like <laughs> um, we had that thing behind us. There was um this other thing, which is again uh, something on a bo- uh, on an F five fifty chassis, which this was like box manufacturer, but it's spelled like oh. the South African. It's the M A N U F A K T U R. Okay. Um, is yeah, it like Earth Roamer Junior? Well, it's a little different because, like, yeah, of course, I didn't take the photo of it when they actually set it up. But if you look at the little sign, That's it's got cool. a pop top. Yeah. So they, it's got another space that like. Ex- Stand it up and, huh. you, and i didn't i don't think i took any other of the big big photos like there was my brother-in-law was like oh you're not around anything big and i was like everything was everything's huge. big was, yeah. yeah like um i did see a rivian r1s in person oh pro- rivian corporate or uh custom? it was it was definitely with manufacturer tags yeah yeah and it parked in the dometic booth next to us oh um, of course which super handy because we have Dometic fridges and AC units in the vans. And so I was like, hi friends. Like that's, and then uh, this thing kind of pulled in next to us and I, they let me hop in the back seat and yep. I was like, I'm a little tall for the back seat, being a little short okay. for like it just, but it, in my mind, I'm like processing, like, can I use this with my kids eventually? So How do I do this? Yeah. 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 And then I was like, it's, it's probably gonna be like hundred grand, 90 grand. Yeah. Yes, it is. No more base models. Yeah. So I was like, I'm, I don't think I can pull it off as right. badass. I think it's amazing. I want it. Yep. It's just so much money. So much money. It's crazy. It's, and it, I mean, it is definitely cool. It is definitely cool, but. Oh, it's funny you would use that word because we were hanging out with these guys too. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have a pair of their pants <laughs> that were given to me for free, which is good. Cause I think they're very expensive. I was to say, I don't have any of their pants because of that exact reason. Yeah. But I love the truck. It's Mule Outfitters. Uh, I think it's an old Stevens chassis that they then just basically completely cook, kitted out for them. So the uh, the cab on the back like opens up and they had like air coming out and just all kinds of craziness all over the place. It's like, this is That's crazy. awesome. That so, is a sick rig. Yeah. Right. Wow. Oh my gosh, I lost my mouse. There we go. <laughs> That's not good. I'm trying to think of what anything else. Oh, the... Um, the GMC uh, Canyon AT4X was there, and I didn't oh. take a photo of it. Okay. <laughs> Have you been around that one yet? <clears throat> like the one they just, yeah. just showed off? No, no, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I've only just in the photos and B-roll and whatnot. Um, but I do think, I'm very happy that you saw the other thing that we were going to talk about. The, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the Ford Maverick Go Fast Campers little collab there. Um, Dude, and I don't know if it's so a collab good. or not, but the the Go Fast Campers making a uh, an Overlander out the box brand new for under $30,000 is absolutely amazing. Right. And then that's, and yeah, that setup is 29 grand. I think it's 28 plus. Well, like that's even got like some like aftermarket wheels on it. And even then, like it's not, that wouldn't be that much more money. Like, yeah. Those are definitely 1552s. Yes. <laughs> as as they and that's the FX4 Maverick. So like it's I loved everything about it, other than the fact that like obviously I can't take all of the kids, but that's my fault. But like for everyone else, yep, with a reasonable number of children. Yeah. This would be great. Absolutely. Um, they sent me the press release on it. I was I was floored when it said, you know, that they tout 29,000. Um, and th- then they cite like a Toyota Tacoma. To the one you want to start is 40. This vehicle, the one you want to start is X. The one you want to start is YZ. And um, 
the fact that they can do this whole thing for under 30 is just absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. obviously, people are going to make their comments like, oh, it doesn't have a transfer case. Doesn't, and all the, all the concerns are valid. But as a weekend warrior, hey, can you just grab that and go, please? Because that's making a lot of noise. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the pot. It is hot out here, so I can't blame her. Um, all I can hear is that popsicle wrapper in my head. That was my daughter who's off camera. Um, it doesn't have a transfer case, which you know, very valid concerns if you're truly wheeling, but for running fire roads and going to campsites, you don't need any of that shit anyway. Um, so for that, it's perfect. For that, like I said, that weekend warrior person, it's amazing. And it's and the brand, the quality, all that stuff, it's a really nice tent. Right? Yeah. Very impressive. Like it, you're hundred percent right. Like the people I see getting that are young professionals, no kids. Like, yeah. And they're the kind of people that as they age out, they're going to come get a van for me, like 40 years down the road. Like <laughs> good point. Yeah. That's exactly. Cause it's like the vans don't have a transfer case. They're all wheel drive. Like yep. they have a body lift that's True. available and we can get a little more lift out of small terrains, but like you don't need all of the hyper crazy transfer cases, differentials, to just go be outdoors. Right, right. Um, and now, uh, speaking of super light, I am, I'm pretty, an I've been vocally anti rooftop tent. Yeah. Um, and then I went away to Arkansas, which you were supposed to go to and you did not. Um, <laughs> it was an awesome trip. You missed out, even though it was hot and humid as hell. Oh and God. the AC was broken in the vehicle that we were operating. <laughs> Um, and I didn't want to have the windows down because we were bushwhacking in sections and they're like, there's ticks everywhere. I'm like, windows up, put the windows up. Uh, exactly. but, but that it was an FJ, it was an 80 series land cruiser with a uh, uh, go fast on the top. And it was excellent. It was comfortable. There was plenty of room. I loved it. Um, and I had a great time. Yeah. That's the truck. Really nice truck. Uh, I, I had a blast sleeping in this thing. Um, I was like, oh, you know what? That rig is super purpose built. The, the diesel engine can easily handle the added weight up top. I still don't know if I want one for my Montero. And then Go Fast was kind enough to send me the no longer in production Superlight V1, which is literally sitting right there in the corner of my garage. Um, it doesn't look small. It's a good size and it's only 85 pounds. Right. I, I, could, I could get it onto the roof of my truck by myself. Um, and I'm going to, I just need to, I, I put it up there to test fit, to see how it's going to look to how much, cause when I ordered my roof rack, I have a Gamma VD roof rack on the roof right. of Montero and I love it. And I told him I'm not putting a, ro a rooftop tent on there. So he said, well, let's go with these up style bars at the front of it. it said, awesome. Love it. Looks great. Uh, and now I need to modify those bars uh, yeah. at the front of it. So this is me just putting the tent up there to see. And it's like the clearance is clearance is just missing it's so close like on the back it looks like it's on um but it fits the length of the roof great uh i'm super excited about it but what i'm gonna have to do is we're gonna cut those roof bars the up the upper portion yeah so that it we're gonna take out to about the forward gusset and then and then put that curved piece back in further okay. up so it'll retain the look we won't then we like, we'll just, we'll only have to clean and powder coat or paint um, so like the here's... weld, the cut lines. We won't have to do a whole lot more. Originally, I was going to see if I could just like slowly bend it outwards, but the builder of the rack was like, it's, you know, it's, it's hollow steel tubing. It can crack at that point. If you're really stressing it in that direction, I was like, I don't want to do that. I took it to OC cars, which do, doesn't work on a lot of my stuff. Cause there's an off-road guy there who's done the, my shocks on my truck and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, he's, I, I'm like, what do you think? Just look at this. We're talking about it, talking about it. He's like, if I, if you don't mind me just cutting it and then shortening these up bars, I'm like, dude, if you can do that, it sounds absolutely perfect because then we don't mess with the light bar mount in the front or the fairing that is already up there as well. Like if you go to the very first pick, the other direction. Yeah. So there's a light bar mounted low, which it wouldn't really mess with anyway. But the fairing, I, to be able to keep the fairing is awesome because that'll help with a, like a tiny bit of fuel economy and uh, wind noise. <laughs> hey, um, any little bit helps with gas as expensive as it is. I mean, it'll, right it'll, it'll almost tuck in like completely behind that. So it's going to be. I'm super excited, uh, especially because um, 
uh, I showed it to my wife and she's like, well, Sloan and I can sleep in there. I was like, you guys would sleep up there. Uh, so that's when I went ahead, I emailed back to our, our friend, Wes Seiler, who's working with GoFast. I'm like, all right, dude, send it over. Cause it, originally I was like, no, nah, I don't need it. I, I'm not going to just take free shit for the sake of free shit. Cause my plan for my truck is still to do a, a Dar a Darchi 270 awning. Um, because thing. I want to build like a ground floor living area. Yeah, I want to do yeah. 270 with sidewalls. I'll put a cot in it. And I mean, that'd be perfect. I, I'm not adding too much weight up high at that point. I'm not, I'm sleeping down low. I, it's, it's perfect for me. So the, this, the thing now is, well, now I'm building a two-story mobile house, uh, wife and kiddo upstairs, me. And if we bring the dog are going to be downstairs. Um, and I, I think I'll be good to go. I'm excited about this setup. But now I'm also researching options of like, well, uh, might be time to think about uh, engine swaps. <laughs> engine um, swaps. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, but I did order um, a new set of old man emu springs for the rear. Yeah, that's okay. the 270, but I'm going to, I want the um, sidewalls. Yeah. You can basically close the whole thing off and it, it'll be awesome. Um, I couldn't get a big image with the walls, but thinking. you can just see, go back up for that thumbnail. Um, you can see the thumbnail. Yeah. Down, down one from there like that, or you could do the option to the left of that, you know, like there's, there's, yeah, yeah this is actually who I get it from is GTFO overland <laughs> randomly, which is where that pick was from. Oh, um, I, I have a, a memory sometimes of who has connected me with who over the years. So yeah, <laughs> I was like, um, if, if you were saying Darji, we we're going GTFO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it's, uh, so Oh, so, but um, the springs, I'm going to do, I got old man emu medium duty springs. Cause I think the springs in the back might be original. Like if you look at the Fox shocks <laughs> because of the springs, there's like two inches of travel. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. And when I, when we went, we went camping recently where we were staying in a yurt, you know, we just, but we had to load the Montero up. So it was filled pretty much filled in the back. And then me, my wife and my daughter. Uh, so that's pretty heavily loaded at that point. Cause now I have a Dometic back there and I had two power banks and I had solar with me. Um, I think I, I think I got the image with it sitting low and you're kind of Carolina squatting almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's with like a lot of stuff out of it. That's just how it, that truck sits. Yeah. So, um, and when I, when it was fully loaded, if I went over like a speed bump, I could feel it bottom. Ooh. So I just, just tossing those old man emus in there will probably instantly fix the issue. I would have to as assume. It sounds like a solid plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the plan for that. I also, because I drove that, that 80 series in the express rally, I also now want e lockers that the, the FJ 80 has air lockers and I want to do e lockers. I don't want to okay. worry about, I already have a separate, actually it's sitting right there on the ground next to me. I have the Vi air portable compressor, okay. which you clip to the battery. Um, and that works great. I don't, I, I was going to go nuts and do the ARB under the hood, full stealth compressor. And then you can add lockers and all that crap. It's like, you know what, <laughs> we're already talking about just stupid amounts of money for a truck that was originally when I bought it $3,500, right. it's very much not that anymore. Is there an e-locker available for it? Yes. Uh, Luso Overland. Luso. They make it for my, my truck front and rear. I can do front and rear e-lockers if I wanted. Then I would get the little lock, uh, like, what is it? Ox beam, the little switch panel. Mm -hmm. And I would run my lights through that. I would run the lockers through that. And I'd be fucking rocking and a rolling. Dude, they do have big images. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> but, the, but it's like, I think it's like 800 per axle. Okay. Not counting installation, which like the price actually isn't that crazy, you know, for what that, that literally transforms you to the next level of off-roading. Yeah. So yeah, I'd be great. pretty strict on that. Um, we just gotta, I'm waiting to get the, the roof rack chopped up uh, next week, Tuesday, cause Monday's a holiday. And then as soon as it's chopped, the, the roof tent's going on and I've got other things to go in there. Like uh, I've got a ladder sitting next to me. I've got the, um, the sleep pad for it, all that crap. So I'm pumped. Yeah, because the super light's only like three or four inches tall. It's super slim. Yeah, it's it's somewhere in there. It's it's, even, it's yeah. I feel like the standard go fast is like six, if that. It might. Yeah, it's it's close to that. I wouldn't say it's over that because it it, yeah. it it it's it's pretty solid. Um, but this is yes, this is slim. It's so good. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Even though I said I was never going to be that guy. Well, but like you're, it's still not 
what you were expecting it to be. It's a much, it's like the one tent that makes sense in that scenario for you. So yes, it's not that you've actually gone back and you didn't like say, oh, well, I'm going to sell the truck if I ever put a tent on it. Like, oh yeah. 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 You were just like, I don't, that doesn't make, that's not a good use case scenario for you. This is the one tent that makes sense there. And it yes. is, I, when, when you said 85 pounds, like I, I had that vague memory of like, I was like, they're crazy light. They're crazy slim. I'm pretty sure those guys, when they first came out, had them on like the back of like a Ford pre-runner because they were going to go run it down in like Nora or something nice. like that in Baja. And so like, I'm trying to remember that. And they've done tons of like videos showing wind tests with it, where they backed one next to a, uh, one of those, um, what are those boats in Florida with the big fans in the back? Um, uh, just a swamp boat. Yeah. They had one of those on a trailer and they fired it up and like showed like, it, like stay, it didn't crumple. It's, it held up to the wind. And so right. that was pretty, that was pretty amazing. Uh, so well, I'm not found, stressed about where I'm going to take it. I found the pre-runner. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's funny. Cause the story I have from in May was, Oh my God, that's sick. Right. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> I think I want to say like Graham ran it down in Nora, but I, now that I don't know if that's hundred percent true. That's amazing. Which has been my pet peeve lately with people uh, reporting things or on things and going like, I don't know if that's true after they say something and I just did it. So I guess I'm getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, it's not quite can't get fired productions over here. So we're good. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's sweet. So do you have any other takeaways from the, that Ozark rally? I, if I had gone on that, I would have been gone for three weekends in a row and like close That's to a lot. 20 some odd days. So yeah. I missed, I missed 12 um, days. It was incredibly well run. Okay. Uh, the two dudes in charge of it um, were awesome. Um, I've been talking to Scott about a few things. He actually invited me on a road rally recently. Cause one of their, 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 um, attendees backed out but said to keep the money and let someone else use the spot it's like i really appreciate that but i don't have time but like keep me posted in the future yeah um yeah. the media team black elk media who runs one of your vans they yeah, were run, awesome. they run a van do it <laughs> they were super cool dudes uh who were really good at their jobs and then um just like having the food either being cooked or ready to go when you pull into the campsite is amazing. I think I was wearing my cool pants in there actually in that shot, really? <laughs> um, yeah, which I got from the Land Rover thing I did. Um, dinner. The, uh, the, the food, the dinner and breakfast, you know, the, the, the trails were amazing. Northwest Arkansas was a, a sick off-roading. Um, really crazy mix of different types of stuff from serious water crossings to really technical stuff to some nice high visibility stuff. Uh, it was, it was an impressive, um, that FJ 60 was or 60 or 62 was so awesome. The guy who runs it owns a company called, uh, lives in designs. They make clothing and I've since bought two pairs of their pants. They're like, they're like forever pants. They're perfect for traveling. They're perfect for doing this stuff. Oh. Um, it was great. And this dude was was driving it on everything we drove all the other trucks on, um, and it it made it through. It had to get towed out once, but it, I mean, it has really narrow tires, and yeah, it, it also had one thing that I thought was the coolest thing ever that I didn't know those trucks had was um, it had a cable throttle in the cabin, where if say you are you want to be clutch and brake because you're in something technical. You can, instead of trying to get your foot over to the throttle real quick, it's almost like a choke. You can start yeah. to pull on the, the, the cable throttle as you come off clutch while you're still on brake and then like really control your motion. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I wonder if that's trying. stock. I think they said it was. Okay. Um, but it, it, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't answer that for sure, but either way, it was really, really cool. Yeah, because um, now we do so much with technology and electronics where that was how they solved that. <laughs> <laughs> Just hopping out of the way. Yep, that's good. <laughs> Truck was dope. They yeah, motored hard. Nice. It was good. Yeah, the black elk guys were in recently and i sent you that photo and then literally just never crossed paths with them in the oh back. that's like, funny like <laughs> no they were cool they were great 
That's sweet. Yeah, I we did a uh, an owner's experience down in Bentonville in June where they basically took a whole bunch of vans down there and they didn't really do any of that. It was more about like just hanging out in Bentonville, a bunch of sure. like mountain bike rides and things like that through all the woods. And I, I don't know. I don't know why the, the changing light in my garage has suddenly gone like ethereal as the sun yeah. has moved across. That's really Dude, kind of annoying, actually. Uh, I do almost a jj abrams movie like, yeah yeah right it's it's very much like that that's sweet man um you also drove a lexus oh lx 600 i just saw one in at expo i saw everything in person for the first time oh nice uh, yeah and lexus i also have uh one little humble brag uh somebody uh came by the booth and picked up one of our like uh fabric bags or whatever and she's like these are nicer than lexus's i was like oh yes. nice there you go yeah <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, ugly, um, on the outside, <laughs> amazing on the inside. And it's, uh, it's the 18 inch wheel and tire package and a rear locker away from greatness. And you can get the wheel and tire package. Uh, rear locker is going to be aftermarket. Okay. Yeah. So basically in the 18, the 18 inch wheel package, they were calling that like a standard trim or whatever. And it was basically their Land Cruiser equivalent, I think. I forget what it was. It wasn't just a standard package thing. There's like, there's this other package that you needed to get to, to unlock the 18 inch wheel and tire package. Okay. And, and then that the 18 inch wheel and tire package at that point is a no cost option. Okay. So, which, which is cool. It's so it's, it's like, it's 80%. I don't want to say 90. I want to say 80, 80, 85% of 300 series land cruiser. Because there, there's a few, like it doesn't have KDSS, which is a big deal for the Land Cruiser people, but it does have AHC, um, which is the auto height control. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a, it was incredibly comfortable inside. And honestly, the way that people buy Land Cruiser, and this is like the top spec, this is like the fanciest effing one, right. which is why it has four seats in the back. Um it was someone asked there, do they offer it with a larger grill? That's funny. Um, <laughs> the, so it's, it, it's, it's really, 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 really good. And it was the first vehicle I've driven that had um, Onyx off-road app through Waze, which now, you know, any Waze vehicle has it or any, not Waze, through CarPlay, excuse me. Okay. It, Onyx off-road through CarPlay. Any vehicle though today with CarPlay can use Onyx off-road, but this was the first time I used it. So it was timely for that. Um, what's but the, I mean, right. I guess it still has a center locking diff, which is nice, but still the, the heated steering wheel has an auto button. Yeah. So it like, I think it senses temperatures in the morning. So when you come out, turn your car on, if you have leave that on auto, it's like, oh, you're going to want that. Okay. And it clearly has two different levels of heated steering wheel. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cause it's a Lexus and it's the vehicle that most it's like, it's, it's going the G class route, you know, it would, yeah. on the flip side though, the G class maybe minus the 63 is still damn um this lighting is getting worse by the second i wonder <laughs> yeah. if i can turn these off and if it'll help you're actually like fading away on us i know it's like a, a back to the future I, and I, there's nothing i can do about it uh unless i you have to buy a garage door without windows like this is the time of day where the sun is over there so there's not a damn thing i can do i wonder if i can get closer to the camera this is the craziest shit i've ever seen um i'm speaking to you from overland heaven uh <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like yeah um you're in the good place hopefully right right well we'll see i'll have to find my way no forking shirt or whatever she says sure um <laughs> so yeah g60 g550 is still an amazing thing off-road even if everybody who buys one never takes them off-road it's it's right. that sort of thing with the lexus um i think land cruiser buyers though bought them because they knew what they were buying i think so i don't know i hope so i mean because they could have afforded the lx lexus yeah they're they they weren't that far away in price they were points. very close to the same price yeah yeah and that that standard trim is supposed to be like that was lexus saying we're gonna get kind of close you guys will be fine yeah so i wonder we'll if see. i just do this oh that helps a little bit yeah I just oh, turn the camera you're, you're coming back to life yeah <laughs> now when sloan comes out to get the next uh, popsicle though you're definitely gonna know yeah there's my fridge there's my mess in front of my peloton which i need to put in the disposal my there's... bike's now almost out of shot speaking of bikes you had you've had electric bikes lately too i had a super 73 it was the z 
Brooklyn, I think it's called. It's their it's their revived or redesigned base model where they took some customer input and changed the frame a little bit and lightened it up and um, they adjusted some things and it was great. We were cruising around uh, and uh, yeah, I had a blast with it. Um, what was that in? Why was that in the back of a truck? It says it's in a Chevy. Yeah, I must have. Oh, I had the Silver Silverado ZR2. Yes, I had the Silverado ZR2, but I never published a story on it. <laughs> um, uh, based on Ross's reaction, you didn't need to. Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was fine. But at the interior, <laughs> that was the exact same reaction. It's fine. Yeah, the interior is better, which is good for them. Um, and I returned the bike in an Acura Integra. <laughs> <laughs> but I was amazed at the uh, the 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 rear room in the Integra. Was you say? Did you post that picture? I did, but I mean, you don't have to find it. But no. it is in the back of an Integra. At one point, at I'm heading back to the good place. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> sun is changing. The problem is, the sun, yeah, the sun keeps moving, or we're moving. <laughs> we're moving. That's true. Right. If you want to be technical actual, about it, yeah. uh, Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson over there. <laughs> I spent a decade teaching middle school See, science, so I you better think, be right about it. You think the sun spins into place when really it's us. So the one thing, uh, something else from the show that my I have a coworker who won't shut up about these. Uh, shout out to Austin. Have you seen the Chiron? Chirons, yeah. They're, they're yeah, the Chirons. scourge of every neighborhood around here. Are they really? Because <laughs> people with too much money are buying them and giving them to their kids and they're ripping through neighborhoods. And these are, they, they, those, those are basically street legal dirt bikes. Um, yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And they, they're not supposed to be used on the road, but these kids are like driving them to school and, and like just blowing down streets and, and like wreaking havoc in orange County on Surons. <laughs> they're sick though. The bikes are sick. So that's like the nice thing about the expo is everyone who has access to this kind of stuff just rides by. So like Super 73s, Surons, and uh, is it Vol Volcon or Volcom? Um, it's got super like wide ATV tires on it. Whoa. Um, I'm, oh, of course now Chrome is taking its sweet time as I oh, switch no worries. tabs. Was cake there? They make the sickest one. There was there was a cake one I saw. Um, They're super expensive. Yeah, it's Volcan. Um, Are they like a, a modern rock on or um, rope, whatever the hell it is? I don't know. Because one of them's two wheel drive. And I wonder if it's that one. This one might be that. Well, there's a, there's more than one two wheel drive. I reviewed an UBCO like a year or two ago. No, I just selected the render photo. Come on. Oh, yeah. Can't do that. Um, man, there are no good ones. Okay, this one's close. But yeah, so I saw a couple of these go by and I actually like straddled one of these just because it was uh, it was in the Backwoods Adventure Mod booth. Threw um, a leg over it. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. I think these are the guys who are doing the the two wheel drive. I think this is who it is. I could okay. be wrong. But maybe like, it's not. That looks sick, though. It looks sick. And like it's I am not a powered two wheel person. I can sure. ride a mountain bike. I'm, a, I'm I'm not good at it, but like I can do it. Yeah. This thing, I was like, all right, I actually want to try that. Like, and this is, this is a, yeah, yeah, I can see the electric motor. Uh, yeah, dude, I got to reach out to these people. I got to try that thing. Dude, it, it's funny though. It looks like the seat's backwards, but I get why it has that curve, but that's funny. Yeah, it's more about, I guess, to keep you stopping from going over the front. Yeah. <laughs> I, even though that's not really going to stop you. That thing's yeah. dope. I loved it. So, and they, they were there and you could have registered to win one and I forgot to register. So, mm. I got to find out who their marketing people are in Marvel, mm. one of those mofos. Um, yeah, that's cool. That's I'll, cool. I'll uh, send an email to uh, Ty down at Backwoods because he was riding around on it. So I'm sure. He yeah, let me know. I want to find that fucker. Yeah. Uh, nice. The sun is changing a little bit, but now it's like getting low and right in my eye. It's hilarious. So everyone's going to have to watch this show just so we can watch you live and die. How's your, how's your mountain bike adventures going? Oh, uh, I haven't. Oh, I didn't tell you about this, did I? Would you eat shit? Yeah. Oh, in bad? Like the lamest way possible. Like that's how it happens. So uh, D and I were just kind of out riding my knee. So I might, I had partially torn patella, partially torn ACL back in March or it did it in January, but I had it repaired in March. Super great healing process, feeling amazing. Orthopedics, like get back on the bike. It'll really help loosen it up. Get you going. Nice. Feel, yeah. Feeling more fantastic. I was like, awesome. 
And I was like, mountain bike trails. And he goes, yeah, stay green. Just be calm with it. And I was, I was taking my time at the 29 inch wheel. So like not a lot of stuff throws me off in sure. Kansas. Like rocks and uh, roots are about it. Um, a place we'd ridden a couple of times already and kind of came around a corner uh, and Declan had kind of stopped in front of me. And so he's 11. So I put my brakes on and was just kind of settling down. And then the next thing I know, I was falling down the hill. I had gone over, <laughs> like it just, I don't know what happened. And just, I, it kind of threw me down the hill and I was, you know, I like you're kind of running downhill to keep from falling sometimes. Yeah. So the bike was coming down behind me. I kind of was a little tangled with the bike, reached out, grabbed a tree to like stop my momentum down the hill at least. And that was at that, po- that point, I was like, well, I definitely hit both knees, which my oh. right knee definitely has something wrong with it. I just haven't had it evaluated yet. Right. Um, the left knee was hurt. It like kind of took a, a, a blunt trauma. And then like both ankles just got, mash somehow front and back Jesus, so like buddy. shin bone yeah like and it, but it was like no speed and then i had like uh bruises on my forearms i had bruises on my back like i didn't i don't remember falling on my back like so yeah uh but it's going okay but i did sw- switch out my pedals i don't think i've talked about that on the show <laughs> um i got those pedals the ones you suggested and i got the the vans grips oh uh, yeah ODI yeah, vans yeah yeah Sweet. and i got those on now absolutely love it just the grips feel good i did after the tumble i ordered a pair of gloves i was like i'm now going to have gloves on my hand if i'm going to go fall down because like the tree had like slashed up my uh finger pretty good so yeah yeah that was my my epic falling down moment so damn dude that sucks (laughs) well and it was like yeah it was just it was a day that like after that, that he and I both went down like three more times. Like, oh, geez. So it was kind of a greasy trail day. Like, yeah, that's not fun. Yeah. Cause you don't, you don't want to ride when it's too wet. Cause then you're tearing up the trail or something. Like right. That. Exactly. So, like, yeah. The surface of the trail was good. Like it was, it was firm and holding, but just for whatever reason throughout the day, like it just turns out I'm showing my 41 years now. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's life, buddy. So left knee still a little tender, right knee stopped hurting, but like I did something to the back of my leg. It's still not happy with me. So that sucks. And that's Ouch. like four weeks ago now. Oh yeah. That's not good. Yeah. No, I, I I'm going to be off the bike for a little bit. Uh, I was on vacation last weekend on my friend's boat and uh, I slipped, fell, landed on kind of the tailbone area. So I'm going to I'm going to be taking her easy on the, the bike for a bit. And it's funny because the day before that, I was riding at a downhill bike park and with, had no injuries. Uh, right. So, so yeah. I do want to talk about this place because it looks amazing. Sick. Uh, Highland Mountain Bike Park. It is the only lift-assisted bike-only park in the country. So in the winter, it does not turn into a ski mountain. Nice. It's always bike. Like they actually run winter sessions where if they have enough snow, cause they don't grow snow. Yeah. And, um, they, um, they will groom the trails and they r- let you run like fat bike tires or studded tires or, you know, what have you. That Did bike, you just, by the way, was a huge disappointment. Was it? Was yeah. That, so that was one that, of the ones you rented. Yeah. They have a really nice rental shop on site. They have a pub on site. Uh, I, that, uh, the Trek session is Trek's downhill bike. And okay. I was, um, I was, it's a bike I'd consider owning at some point, like just to have a park bike if I ever wanted to go that route. Um, and I was super excited. I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to get to try a session, like a big travel downhill mountain bike. And they said it was an XL, but it felt so small to me where the first I took two runs on it. I felt like I was constantly like up over the bars. I was like, this is sketchy as fuck. (laughs) And I said, nope, I I turned it in. It's like, can I try something else? And I didn't take a picture of it, but they had a Trek Slash, which is the other type of bike I'd want if I wanted to replace the Fuel EX that's over my shoulder, um, which is like the more enduro version of my bike with, you know, more slack and more travel and all that stuff. And that bike was Mm -hmm. awesome. So that was a good experience at least. Um, But the the place itself was incredible. I had an absolute blast. Um, It's always funny riding on the East Coast where like you start sweating immediately because it's so much more humid than what i'm used to Uh, but i was riding with a friend uh who who lives out in massachusetts and rides a ton um he rides with guys who are crazy fast and so i was like he's like do you want to lead i'm like nah you lead i don't want to hold you up um 
Um, I'll be back but, here doing my thing. Yeah, no, but but we had a blast and it, it was a good time. And it was funny, like we took a break midday. I'm like, oh, do you want to get a beer? He's like, no, I don't usually. And he's a big beer guy. Like we talk about beer all the time. He's like, no, yeah. I don't usually do a, a beer when I'm riding. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. No, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, why uh, were you? I would never. <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't chastised, but I'm like, oh, no, I, I get it. I get it. But like in the parking lot, we had a beer um, <laughs> afterwards, uh, <laughs> as you should do. Uh, yeah afterwards do you yeah, have don't a, a cayenne on that trip no it was a macan oh macan okay macan gts yeah he pulls up he's like i should have figured you had a something something fancy yeah like the people in the parking lot after we're having the beer because it was hot out the people next to us I'm like hey can we share the shade under the tree they're like of course I'm like what's up with the porsche <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you know, they saw it as manufacturer plates they're like are you yeah. do you work for porsche i was like no I'm, I'm a journalist like oh we were trying to figure it out they're using the new england we were trying to figure it out what's up with the car <laughs> i was like no nah, here's the deal and blah 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 <laughs> Dude, we were having a conversation the other day of how often australian and boston blend Oh, I could see that. Like if you to play me, with the accent. To me, it doesn't. Okay. Like, to me, they're two clearly very different accents. But I could see where someone who isn't from either, not that I'm from Australia, but someone who isn't from either like from Mass, could see the blending of the two. But to me, to my ears, separate, 100%. But I could see how if you're working on one, you might transition into the other. Yeah. That's where we got it. in trouble with it. We were messing around with Australian stuff. And some of the, I was like, you sound so Boston right now. What yeah. See, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe the difference, but there's definitely a difference. Uh, yeah. I, I, I got to think about that. Cause I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to be able to describe the difference. And I feel like I could do it if I think about it a little bit. I feel like long A's are where they blend. And then there are a whole bunch of other places where they're separate, but that's like the one spot where people like with Ka or whatever. Yeah, but they don't say ka. They don't say ka, and you know, in Australia, they they there there might be more like because they do like say like Fosters, like uh, Fosters, mate, like mate, yeah. mate. I'm I'm mate because that's a that's a hard biting a shit. I, I if we dive into this, it's going to be too <laughs> long. Good. I'm just going to tell right. you that. Now. Yeah. So I'm going to no, cut no. it off here. We're, we're not going uh, over because the time limit. <laughs> it's going to bother the shit out of me, and I'm going to send you a text <laughs> or or an um, email later and be like, I figured it out. And I'm okay with that. We could definitely yeah. We can read about it later. Yeah. yeah. But go, if you're near Highland, go check it out. It's sick. Yeah. I actually pulled up just their straight Instagram page and like every photo is just insane. The slope style course is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, obviously I didn't ride on it, but like they host a Red Bull event. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's, it's, and the, the young kids who are the locals were fucking shredding, like doing sick whips. Uh, it was, it was the raddest stuff. Like, I just so, want to land and they're like, no, 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 let me throw extra limbs off the bike. Like, dude, it's so, so nasty. They like, they were the, the, the quality of riders who were hitting so, some of the stuff was so good. Like, yeah, it, it's a really, really good place. Everybody who worked there was super friendly. Um, oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> He's so it's, high. <laughs> right. It's incredible, man. I'm happy to tell you that I did not hit that feature. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, these, this is the kind of place I'm like, I just want to survive. Like, I don't Yeah. Know. And you can, that's the thing. There's, there's super easy trails too. Like there's some, there's cross country trails. If you want to avoid the lift and just climb and pedal. Um, so there was something for everyone and then food and beverage on site and the shop. For, I bought my daughter a little sweatshirt. I bought a t-shirt um, next year. Cause I, I go to the same trip I do in New Hampshire every year. And the year before I went to Cranmore and it was fine i it wasn't that exciting um i thought about doing killington which would be sick but it's just too far away uh i'm gonna hit highland again next year no doubt in my mind that's so great yep all right man i think we went through our whole list didn't we i think that's it unless you just want to talk about ev6 or psionic i do not okay, on this podcast i don't, I don't. yeah i <laughs> well here's the funny thing is like uh we're off-road podcasts but like i now drive 48 minutes one way to work oh yeah and so there's part of my brain that like robbie like robbie DeGraff right now has a nissan prius nightshade in denver and is like tweeting about his 54 miles to the gallon in the city yeah but he loves everything <laughs> right I, I know but like there's part of my brain that's like okay so how much is that like to be honest the one i want i want a sienna with that hybrid in it and all wheel drive. Yeah, that thing's fantastic and i want to get 33 miles to the gallon and- or the pacific is good too yeah, but it's only front wheel drive and yeah, it, but it, oh, it would be fine in the snow, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Just I'm, no, I want I want my wife's next car to be an EV6, probably. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, it's very expensive though. So maybe not, but, uh, yeah, that's where we're at on that. I should have you guys on so you can talk normal car shit on the Hooniverse <laughs> podcast. We, we'd be willing, you know, we, we, we're used to doing podcast stuff. So yeah, for sure. Do that. Uh, after the R1S the other day, I had a guy standing in the booth talking to me with a Volkswagen t-shirt on. And so he turned me on to ID buzz, which I had not, I don't the really buzz desire for it. Could but it be was cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think he said it was only going to be like 60 or 70, like, I mean, it's crazy. We live in a time where we're saying only 60 or 70, right. but correct. Yeah, no, uh, we'll see when it lands. I think a bunch of journalists were just in Germany to drive it, actually. Okay. I was not one of them. <laughs> I was in front of the Hummer EV again. Yeah. Dumbest well, thing ever made. Everybody who's driven it, though, says it's awesome. <laughs> well, there's five on a lot here. All oh. listed as pre-owned. Oh, uh, Jesus. So they can mark the shit out of them. 220 to 250 that's fucking bananas if you spend that much on that you're a psychopath though they some other people could say that about adventure vans to be totally honest people could be like oh you know because the airstream one starts at like 212 i'm sure your builds are 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 maybe less than an airstream but not cheap yeah not nothing's below six figures right not below six figures but not where everyone else starts like i finish before others start so that's you should get that checked out. Um, <laughs> no, that's a good that that could be a funny line, a tagline for your marketing. We, we finish, finish before tomorrow. others even start. Uh, uh, I will pick it cheek. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tongue and cheek viral advertising. Fuck yeah! Oh my god, I'm, I'm crediting you on it too. You're getting that. I appreciate it. I appreciate when that it. check comes in, I'll definitely split it with you. Nice, excellent. <laughs> well, sweet. Um, I think we're gonna be in under your time limit. So. You can rate and review this show on podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, wherever. Oh, I pulled my earbuds out. That's going to be difficult <laughs> to hear me talk the rest of the show. I can hear you. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, you can follow Jeff. He's at Hooniverse Jeff everywhere. I still forget that sometimes. Uh, the Hooniverse for Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. I'm at Overlanding Dad. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. I took a weird like social media break, like most Ooh. of the time when we weren't posting the show like i just didn't have social media on my phone i came back and i had like 40 new followers and i didn't That's weird yeah i didn't understand how i gained followers by not posting i just had a reel go viral the other day which has never yeah. happened to me and it was the dumbest reel i've ever done i did one of those like ones that everybody else does yeah uh and it's over 1.3 million now on views damn and i've gained like 300 followers from it <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but the comments are fucking awful. So I'm not even wading into it. I'm like, all right, this happened. I'm just going to yeah. move on. <laughs> I do like, like every now and then, like I'll post a reel and like nothing will happen with it. And then like three weeks later, it somehow gets like pulled back into that algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I fucking, I wish I hate Instagram, but I, I can't quit it. it. <laughs> well, I always loved Instagram because it was just pics. That was the best part yeah. of it. And they, they're absolutely destroying it. So it sucks, but whatever. Which is that I posted like three photos from like Expo and myself and like they won't go anywhere or do anything. Mm -hmm. If I'd have made a reel. Yeah, that's the damn. I just hate Stupid. selling my soul for that shit. Anyway. Yeah, it's life. <sighs> so read Hooniverse, watch Auto Trader videos. Yeah. That's about do it. that too. That's about it, right? Perfect. Not anything. <laughs> Perfect. Come, come talk to me about a van. Curse at Van Do that. Let's, go let's buy vans. Out. Please. Please. Buy. No. That's it. That's our show. Thanks. Adios.